So the all-star game lineups have been announced and you might have noticed that there's some players missing. We got some snubs here. We're going to talk about them. I've got a list of, I think, 12 or 13 guys that I truly believe have a case to be on the all-star team this year that didn't make it. The all-star team for the most part was pretty good, but they missed some obvious picks. So let's go ahead and talk about the guys who got snubbed from the all-star team. Maybe they'll be on the team at some point from injuries and guys backing out because they're starting really close to the all-star game. Some of these guys might end up on there, but right now at the time of recording, they are not all-star. So let's talk about the snubs. If you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like on it. That's the best way to show your support. We had 3,000 likes. I'll rank every player in the all-star game. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and you enjoy the content. Click that sub button. Join the team. We are like almost 2k away from 200k. That's nuts. Get in the comment section down below. Let me know who you think was the biggest snub of the all-star game and drop me a follow on all my social media. Giraffe neck mark. Link as always is in the description. For the first player, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Gary Sanchez. Gary Sanchez got snubbed. He's having a really good year offensively behind the plate for the Yankees. Been one of the few guys that is hitting 14 homers, 10 doubles on the year in 64 games, 230 average, but a 337 on base. We're seeing him walk a lot. 478 slugging, 816 OPS. While he's not as good defensively as Mike Zunino and Zunino has like a better OPS, I think there's a world where Gary Sanchez could have made the all-star team. He's having a pretty solid year. Might be one of the weaker snubs, but I think he has a case. So when I saw this guy's name, I thought that it's because he's injured, but Max Scherzer's back and somehow he did not make the all-star team. I mean, Max Scherzer is having one of the best starts to a season he's ever had in his career at age 36 and somehow this dude didn't get picked for the all-star game he's got to be the biggest snub there is on the season 16 starts 2.10 era a whip at 0.848 fip at 3.08 he struck out 127 of the 358 batters he's faced scherzer has the seventh lowest era in major league baseball he's got the fourth highest k rate at 35.5 percent k to walk ratio he's only worse than jacob de 29.6 percent opposed to Degrom's 41.7 i mean no way that you look at this and you go max scherzer shouldn't be an all-star i can't believe this guy's not on the list i really thought it was due to injury but no he's healthy he's fine and he's not on the all-star team i don't know how this is possible he been national league east themed here another huge snub bryce harper i don't know how bryce harper didn't make the all-star team guys like mookie betts chris taylor having good years but harper's been better i know he only has 26 home runs but it's because all his home runs have basically if not exactly been all solo shots it's not his fault he's not driving in more runs 266 average 371 on base 505 slugging 876 ops those are all-star type numbers a 141 ops plus 14 home 10 doubles? I don't know how Harper didn't make it. He should be an all-star. He should be one of the outfielders. He deserves it. The dude's very, very good. He's just proving even more how underrated he is. And then we've got another outfielder that has a legitimate case for being an all-star, and that's Tyler O'Neill of the St. Louis Cardinals. Tyler O'Neill is having an unbelievable season. I feel like a lot of people don't know this. In 64 games this year, 15 homers, 17 doubles, 36 RBIs. He stole six bases, 279 average, 333 on base, 562 slugging, 895 OPS. Good enough for an OPS plus at 149. While he's a little bit bit low in the at-bats in the 200 range, and maybe that's why. In those 200 at-bats, he's been just as good, if not better, than some of the outfielders on this list. A guy who has a legitimate gripe as to why he wasn't selected to the All-Star team, because he's having an All-Star type season. Another National League Central player here, this time on the pitching side, Freddie Peralta's got legitimate beef for not being an All-Star. I don't know how this dude didn't make it either. Kind of the point of this video. Freddie Peralta, you've always seen the potential with him, but this year with the Brewers, he has taken that to a new level. I was talking about the great season of Max Scherzer. Listen to Peralta's numbers, because they're very, very good, and very similar. 16 starts, 17 appearances, a 2.23 ERA, a whip at 0.903, a FIP at 3.09. He's striking out 30. He has the ninth lowest ERA in baseball, sixth lowest in the National League. He has a 35% K rate. He's doing everything you want a pitcher to do. He's been fantastic. He stepped his game up and somehow he got just completely screwed. I don't know how he didn't make it. I know that every team needs to have one representative so I can screw some people over, but Freddie Peralta deserves to be a guaranteed lock on this team. Now for my next pitcher, maybe a little bias here, but I believe that Taiwan Walker deserves to be on the all-star team. Taiwan Walker has the 12th best ERA in Major League Baseball. He's eighth in the National League. While he doesn't have the crazy high strikeout numbers, he still has a pretty good K to walk ratio. A FIP at 3.05. That's one of the better in the National League. He has a whip at 1.01. I see some of the names like you Darvish on there and I go, ah, while Taiwan Walker might not be the actual better pitcher this season, Taiwan Walker is performing like that. He's been so big for the Mets. I think this guy deserves a spot on the all-star team without a doubt. But again, maybe I'm biased. I don't know. You can let me know in the comments down below. I I swear they're not all National League players here, but they had the most snubs. Next up, Omar Nervias of the Milwaukee Brewers. How is he not the backup catcher in the National League? How did J2 Ralmuto make it over him? Nervias on the season's hitting 301 with a 393 on base, 459 slugging, 852 OPS. And if you want to bring up the defense, he's been stellar behind the plate this year. He's improved massively. Seven homers, 10 doubles, 25 RBIs. And in fact, he might even have eight homers. He hit one against the Mets tonight. His numbers might even be better. Going up against JT Ralmuto, who has similar numbers, worse in almost every single category. I don't know how. Real 
Yamamoto makes it over Omar Nervais. This guy got screwed out of an all-star spot, another Milwaukee Brewer, one of the better teams in the league. Here we go. American League player, Chris Bassett, Oakland A's. This dude has legitimate beef for not making the all-star team because a guy like Nathan Evaldi, who while he has a great fit, the traditional numbers aren't as good as Chris Bassett's. There's a case for Chris Bassett to make it over him. Bassett on the season in 17 starts has pitched 106 innings, which is a ton. Oh my goodness. 3.04 ERA, 9-2 record, 1.031 whip, a FIP at 3.25, 9K per 9, 7 hits per 9, under a home run per 9, not walking a lot of guys. Chris Bassett, not the most exciting pitcher, a little Kyle Gibson-y in the way that they pitch, but he's getting results. And for the Oakland A's who have been great this year, I think Chris Bassett should be on this all-star team. Probably the biggest thump of all relievers. I could have listed 100, but I'm going to go with Emmanuel Classe of the Indians. Classe has just been one of the better relievers in baseball this year, and somehow this dude did not make the all-star team. He's made 36 appearances, 35 and two-thirds innings, 11 saves on the year, a 1.01 ERA, a whip at 1.150. He does walk a few guys and give up some hits, but he's got some of the nastiest stuff in the league. He's not giving up hard contact. I think he's only allowed like one or two barrels this season. Hasn't given up a single home run. Classe has been disgusting. This guy deserves to be on the all-star team. At 23 years of age, he's one of the better relievers in baseball right now this season. He's not on the all-star team. Don't get it. Another huge snub coming from the pitching side here. National League pitcher for the Dodgers, Walker Bueller. Who should be on the all-star team? Bueller has been fantastic this year. In every single start this year, he's gone six innings or more. Has an ERA at 2.35 in those 16 starts. 103 innings pitched. A whip under one at .90. Striking out almost nine batters per nine innings. A K rate just under 30%. Not walking anybody. 6.2 hits per nine. Walker Bueller is one of the better pitchers in the game. I don't know how this guy gets left off the all-star team. You didn't want to put too many Dodgers, I guess. I don't know. How does a guy like you, Darvish, make it over Walker Bueller? Walker Bueller deserves to be on there. I mean, he's been one of the most consistently good pitchers this season. And then I got another Los Angeles Dodger. I'm sorry. It feels like a Dodgers video, but Justin Turner deserves to be an all-star. I mean, what he's doing at the plate this year is really, really good. And the third baseman that made it right now is having a better season than both Arenado and Chris Bryant, arguably. Turner on the year has 13 homers, 14 doubles in 78 games with 41 RBIs, hitting 295 with a 388 on base, 484 slugging, 872 OPS. Better numbers than all the guys that made it. He's hitting the ball exceptionally well. He's got a high OPS, an OPS plus at 144. I understand there's only so much space for each player, but he should have been on it over Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant had a hot start to the year, cooled off a little bit now. Justin Turner has stayed hot and he's playing good baseball. Again, continuing to be an extremely underrated player at third base in baseball. Another third baseman I think has some beef with being snubbed, Manny Machado, another guy who's having a better year than Nolan Arenado and Chris Bryant, arguably. We know what he can do in the field at the plate while he started off slow. He's been heating up recently. 15 homers, 12 doubles, two triples, 57 RBIs, and he stole nine bases, weirdly enough. 264 average, 346 on base, 482 slugging, 828 OPS. That's a better on base than Nolan Arenado. Chris Bryant's got the higher OPS, but of course, he doesn't play the defense like Machado, so it depends what you value. But I think Machado has an argument to be a snub. Not as much as Turner, but I think he's good to be on this list. And last but certainly not least, I mean, I could probably say every single reliever in Major League Baseball because those guys should have made it over a role as Chapman. But let me just list off some names real quick. I won't go into too much detail, but guys who are having better years than him. Kendall Graveman. He's been sick. Andrew Kittredge. Garrett Whitlock. Jordan Romano. Scott Barlow. Colin McHugh. Jonathan Lewis again. Chad Green, his teammates. Those are just a few of the names that are having better years than Aroldis Chapman who didn't make the All-Star team. Confusing. I know Chapman was nasty to start the year, but pretty much any reliever at this point seems like could have been a better one. Even Josh Taylor, who's had this crazy scoreless streak. I'm just not sure how Chapman made it over a lot of these guys. So those are the biggest snubs for the All-Star game. We got 12. We got 13 guys on here. Which one do you think is the biggest? I would love to know what you think down in the comments below. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it. 3,000 likes. I'm going to rank every player in the All-Star game. Subscribe to the channel. We're so close to 200k. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok, Giraffe Neck Mark. Links in description. That's where I'm wrapping up today's video. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye!